Hi, I'm Erica, the Senior SAT and ACT Curriculum Manager here at Magoosh. If you're watching this video, it's because you want to get a leg up on the ACT by learning how best to use your allowed calculator. And that's a great idea but you have to be careful. There's a lot of articles and videos out there about calculator tricks, but they aren't necessarily useful unless you wanna risk getting kicked out of your testing center. In this video, I'm gonna go through five ACT calculator tips that'll help you make the most of your allowed calculator without jeopardizing your ACT test score. Tip number one is to be critical about when and how you use a calculator. An important thing to know about the ACT is that no question is designed to require the use of a calculator. In fact, using a calculator on many problems is going to slow you down or cause you to make mistakes. So when you reach a, a problem where you have to do a calculation, don't reach for a calculator by default. Figure out if that's actually gonna help you go faster or make it more likely for you to do a correct calculation. Now, if you do decide to use a calculator on a problem, make sure that you're using it wisely. Make sure that you're writing steps down in between calculations and not just doing five steps in a row in a calculator and making a mistake in the first one that cascades. Similarly, if you do a calculation on the calculator, do a quick logical check afterward to see if what you got made sense. Tip number two is to know the rules regarding calculators on the ACT, and there are quite a few of them. So an important rule is that calculators are only allowed on the math section, so they are not allowed on the science section. They're also not allowed on reading and writing, but that's not quite as important. So any math that you're doing on the ACT science section, you need to make sure that you can do on paper or in your head without the use of a calculator. So don't practice ACT science using a calculator at home. Another rule is around which types of calculator are allowed on the ACT math section. Some very popular calculators are not allowed at all, and others are allowed only with specific modifications. Now, the ACT calculator policy is on the ACT website, so I highly recommend looking at it before you go into your test day so you don't end up with your calculator taken away. And if you're not sure, you're not totally positive if your calculator is okay, it's never a bad idea to bring a backup calculator. Finally, downloading programs to your calculator or saving information to your calculator in advance of your test is not permitted on the ACT. And this is the reason why a lot of calculator tricks videos and articles are not going to be applicable for this test. So if you're seeing tips related to saving things on your calculator, know that that video is either related to the SAT or it's recommending that you break the rules. Now, some people do get away with breaking the rules on the ACT because maybe their proctor isn't looking quite as closely, but if you do this, know that you're taking your score into your own hands. Tip number three is to practice with your calculator before your test. Uh, one of the mistakes that I see students make is getting a new calculator right before their test and then not knowing how to use it when they get to the test center. And that's gonna cause you more harm than help. So make sure that when you're practicing in advance of your test day, you're using the actual calculator you're going to be using on your test so that you know what you can and can't do with it and so that you're comfortable using it for your test day. Speaking of things your calculator may be able to do, let's move on to tip number four, which is to use the graphing function on your calculator. Now, graphing calculators are permitted on the ACT, again, provided it's one of the permitted makes and models of calculator. And this graphing function opens up a world of opportunities for new ways to solve problems. Now, this applies for your standard coordinate geometry type questions, but it also applies for algebra questions that aren't necessarily tied to a graph. So instead of finding the roots of a particularly nasty quadratic, instead you could plug it into your graphing calculator and find the x-intercepts. Instead of solving all the way through a system of equations, you can plug it into your graphing calculator and find the intercepts. Now a quick note, if you don't have a graphing calculator, that's okay. Again, you don't need a calculator at all on this exam. If you have the opportunity to get and practice with a graphing calculator before your exam, I do recommend that. But again, tip three is important. So if it's a choice between a familiar calculator that you can't graph with and an unfamiliar calculator that you can graph with, I would recommend going with the familiar non-graphing calculator. Tip number five is to use your calculator to back solve. 
Now, if you've been studying for the ACT for a while, you probably know the strategy of back solving, which is instead of solving a problem straight through, you instead take the answers and plug them back into the problem. Now, a lot of test takers shy away from the strategy because instead of doing one problem for the answer, we're doing up to five problems, one for each answer choice. And this may be true if you're doing it all on paper, but that's where our calculator comes in. Because back solving turns this into simple plug and chug arithmetic instead of complicated algebra, this is something that we can do quickly and easily and simply on our calculator. So while we are doing five different calculations, they go incredibly quickly and you can solve the problem much more quickly and with less pain than you would with algebra. Again, tip number one applies here. Make sure that you're using your calculator carefully. So you probably don't need to write anything down if it's simple plug and chug, but doing something like a logical check can ensure that you're not making a mistake and picking an answer too early based on a miscalculation. And those are five tips for using your calculator on the ACT that won't get you booted out of your testing center. Let me know if you'd like to see the same video but for the SAT, which is a significantly more lenient test in terms of calculator policy. To stay updated with all of our upcoming videos and live streams, like this video and hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions or suggestions for other video topics, leave me a comment down below. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.